All right, so if you have requested this game before in my comment section, you know who you are. You are very excited right now because this is like a game that you never thought I would play, right? You've been requesting this for years and years and years, but finally, I finally hopped into this game. So about a year ago, I played VTOL VR. This is a VR flight simulator, kind of lightweight flight simulator game that I love. It is an absolutely amazing game. It's like overwhelmingly positive rated on Steam right now. If you have VR, get VTOL VR. It's such a good entry into flight combat and flight simulation that I just have to recommend that to you guys before the start of this video. But when I played those games, everybody was like, all right, Drewski, why don't you try DCS? It's a digital combat simulator game where it has fully simulated aircraft with every single button functioning. And I said, yeah, that's cool, but that also, you know, that's a little bit bigger of a step than just hopping into an aircraft and being able to click some switches. This is like learning an entire real aircraft itself. So I, I, I backed away. I said, you know what, maybe later, maybe later when I have more time and, uh, yeah, I've had more time recently. I enjoyed VTOL VR because the actual VR controls, being able to physically move my hands around the cockpit is one of the coolest feelings ever. And I still think that DCS needs to develop something along those lines because I think that in the future, that could be the future of flight simulation is having a fully f like fully fledged glove VR system where you could grab and flick switches in your cockpit and such. I think that would be, and that will be eventually a thing and that'll be amazing for us flight sim nerds out there but I still wanted to try DCS DCS is a beautifully simulated game there's a nearly 100% realistic aircraft you buy a single aircraft in this game for like 40 or 80 dollars which is super steep but you're also getting some aircraft in the game that are seriously one-to-one -one recreations of what they would be in real life and the flight models are extremely realistic the uh, mechanics and, and the functions and the computers inside those aircraft and the way the radar functions is almost I would say one to one from my knowledge. This game has a map that is literally the entire northeast of the Black Sea. I would argue that this is probably the biggest video game map that has ever existed. I mean, this map is thousands of miles in length. It's nuts. And even with that scale, the areas that you're flying over are usually pretty beautiful places. I mean, the lighting in this game is some of the most realistic you can get, and the, the terrain is also some of the most realistic. There's very simple grass and stuff, and, you know, I wouldn't want to play Arma here because there's literally no no small terrain, but when you're in the air flying over a city super quickly at supersonic speeds, it looks good. So when I was looking through YouTube and trying to find out more about this game, I ran into a video that was kind of interesting. And while I was watching this video about DCS, I recognized something. I recognized that the person who had made the video titled it very similarly to one of my videos, and then also the person's diction in the video was almost one-to-one -one at some points with mine. And my diction is broken and, and messed up and I'm a Texan so my grammar is bad. So I took a little bit deeper of a look into the video and I found that it was just 100% plagiarized. Fire 15 rounds out of your rifle, then reload it, then bam. That magazine that you dropped on the ground, the one that still had 15 rounds left, yeah, those rounds have now magically floated back into your inventory. Whip a jet around the sky, and your plane carries 99 missiles, and when you fly through a magical spot in the sky, boom, all your missiles are back. Why? Well, it's easy. It's but why? It's easy. Who would ever want to manage their inventory to every last single bullet in their magazine? Who in the, their right mind would want to go through the tedious process of flight planning? It's the opposite of accessible. It's the let's buy a game that has 91 keybinds that you must remember. It's the opposite of accessible. It's the combat flight simulator that has, let's take a look, 600 key. But while you and your friend Jake might be out there. So while you're playing Call of Duty with your friends on Xbox, there's a deep unseen PC gaming community. There's a hidden squadron of AV-8B Harrier 2 pilots of members uh, communicating using realistic radios with actual frequencies with pilots communicating over actual frequencies can be role played by your next door neighbor a middle school math teacher a school teacher this is true teamwork this is true teamwork so 
interesting. I've never had this happen before. Uh, the guy put his Patreon links all over the video, but never said my name until I contacted him about it. And I also was actually, uh, I was ignoring my Discord DMs that same day, but I had actually gotten three different Discord DMs saying, hey, Drewski, I found a video that kind of sounds like one of your videos. The guy totally stole the script and the idea and just put it into DCS and didn't put my name on it and put his Patreon links at the end of it. I was kind of upset, but it doesn't matter. It's YouTube, it's fair use. I, you can't do anything about it, so let's just let that slide. In the words of Nakey Jakey on Twitter, seen some fans make what they call Jakey style videos, which is incredibly flattering, but also I've worked really, really hard to develop a unique style over the years, and it kind of sucks to see people rip it off practically beat for beat. IDK, dude, makes me kind of feel sad. Yep, 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 same here, yep. Let's not credit the guy that we got the script from, but you know what? Let's put the Patreon link at the end of the video, and then the pinned comment, and the, the top of the description. Support my plagiarized work, everybody. This is true teamwork. This is true teamwork. So although this was a kind of negative thing, I also think it was a positive moment because I was able to remember that, oh my gosh, DCS is a thing. I still need to hop into this game. I've got some free time now. Got some time to spend about maybe two or three weeks to learn a plane. Uh, now I just have to learn a plane. But first I had to ask some questions like what plane should I get and what map should I get or should I even buy a different map or what? I don't know where, where I should get started in this. So I had to find a person that could help me out with those questions. I didn't know who to ask those questions to, but then I remembered that actually before I even started my channel, I watched a guy named Ralphie Dude, who also has joined us in some Tarkov episodes from time to time. Ralphie Dude is a DCS YouTuber. He plays DCS all the time. His videos are amazing. If you want to see some like guys that play this game for 5,000 hours play DCS, you want to watch Ralphie Dude. This is probably the best guy I could have gotten to train me with DCS. I said, hey, Ralphie, dude, which 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 aircraft should I get? And he said, well, what do you like to do? And I said, well, I like air-to-air -air stuff, but I, but I kind of like multi-roll as well. And he said, you should get the F-18. So I got the F-18. $80 <laughs> later, I'm sitting there with a cockpit uh, of, of an F-18, and I don't know any of those single buttons that are in it, and I'm just looking at it like... <laughs> but let me just tell you guys, Ralphie, dude, is the best teacher I have ever seen. If you guys really want to go watch his videos, I, I cannot thank him enough for helping me out learning DCS, because if I went with just the tutorials, I wouldn't have been able to figure this out. Now, I don't think he's giving out lessons or, or you know, doing any teacher stuff, but you can definitely find people out there that are experienced in this game that are willing to teach new players in this game. So let's get into ground school. Ground School was all about radars. He taught me about how the radar functions work in an F-18 and most other aircraft. He told me about all the kind of quirks and, and features, features. Uh, about all the different aircraft like the Russian aircraft and Frogfoots and Flankers and A-10s and F-18s and how different aircraft have different radar systems and how those radar systems sometimes have weaknesses and strengths. He then told me different maneuvers you can actually do as a Russian aircraft to evade an F-18's radar, like moving perpendicular to the F-18 and also being lower than them and having the ground behind you is making you basically invisible to an F-18's radar. I never knew that. Or how basically a radar system never allows you to be stealthy because you're emitting a radar signal out to any aircraft in the area in front of you. So every single aircraft out in front of you knows that you're there and you can't sneak up on them while you have your radar on. Oh, okay, a little bit of sensory overload there maybe. This was a two hour conversation and it was done entirely through a Discord call with him drawing on paint. Now this is modern day gaming. So two days later, he actually got me down in flight school. I actually got to sit in the cockpit of the F-18 and look around and see the areas and all the buttons around me and, and all the displays out in front of me. He, he told me how to turn it on. He told me how to uh, take it off, which is a whole process of, I don't even know how to describe what the startup sequence is on the F-18. I did it once and I have fully forgotten it, but there's a keystroke that you can click that just does it for you because, you know, who seriously wants to click 80? I guess some, I, I guess if you're playing DCS you kind of, and you buy it for $80, you might want to do the startup sequence every time. The startup sequence is a checklist of like 200 different buttons and switches in the aircraft. You're testing all of the oxygen, you're testing all of the warning systems and all of that. You're, you're turning on all the systems and uh, testing them and making sure they're functioning correctly. You're moving the wings around, making sure they work correctly. Your uh, flaps up and down, it's, it's terrible. Or you can just click Windows Home and then you're good to go. <laughs> After two and a half days of learning how this aircraft worked, I was finally on the taxiway, rolling up behind Ralphie Dude as he 
taught me how to take off, which I've done this a few times before in different games like Arma or like VTOL VR. So I, I have flight characteristics down. I understand flight. I actually almost was going to be a helicopter pilot when I was just leaving high school. I was about to go to a helicopter pilot school. So I actually had studied a ton with helicopter aerodynamics. And so I had a good idea of how that worked, but learning a new aircraft is always funny because you never really know exactly how it's going to feel when you finally take it off. But my first takeoff went like this. Okay, and just go ahead and then uh, push the throttle all the way to 100% and let the aircraft kind of take off on its own. If okay. the runway's coming to the right in front of you to the end and you still haven't lifted off, give it just a little bit of back pressure. You really don't need much. This aircraft kind of flies itself. Okay. Okay, on your go. Oh damn, yeah, my nose is already lifting. Wow, that takes off quick. Yep, kind of by itself. Now gear. Yep, gear up. And flaps up. Flaps up. And we were up. We were in the air. We did some maneuvers. We flew around a little bit. Once we were in the air, he taught me a little bit about different mechanics of the aircraft and how it flies. Uh, he taught me how to land the aircraft just while we were up in the air, actually. He told me that, you know, when you're actually landing this, it's a it's a uh, fighter jet that's made to land on aircraft carriers. So it actually lands with all three wheels. It doesn't land on its rear wheels first and then onto its front gear. It actually lands with all three wheels down. You kind of just slam it into the ground whenever you land. You just have to make sure that your descent rate, uh, there's a word for that that's probably not descent rate rate but you know what I mean uh, your descent rate isn't below a certain number and so Ralphie was actually super helpful in this because I didn't know the speed at which you needed to land I didn't know anything about the rate at which I needed to descend to land safely I mean we had just me and my friend Viper had just been messing around in DCS earlier and I probably landed a, a a10 warthog at I don't even know probably maybe four times the uh, the speed so it didn't go over so well and so knowing the exact numbers of you know where to land and how you should land and where you need to put this little reticle and learning all about the different mechanics. It, it's it's a super helpful way to learn the game whenever you have a person right there next to you teaching you how to play. When a lot of people ask me, how do you play Escape from Tarkov? What's the best tip you can give me right now? Because they're usually just starting the game and they're beginning and they don't know what to do. I always tell people there's no single tip I can tell you in a reasonable amount of time. It's 1,000 tiny tidbits of information that teach you how to play a game. So when you play with somebody that's already experienced in the game, they can teach you those little thousand tiny tidbits because things pop up when you're playing the game along with them. They'll go, oh, and I'm reminded by this, you know, when you land this little circle three prong thing should be about where you want to touch down on the on the airstrip or tell you that the scavs in the interchange only mainly spawn in a few different locations instead of just all over the map. Those little tidbits of information are the most important ones. When you're playing alongside the teacher in the game, it'll remind that teacher of all the different little tiny bits of information that are the most useful. So that's what I always suggest. If you're trying to learn a game, get a teacher. It's the best way to understand the mechanics of a very advanced game. So finally, after flying around for a little bit, we were finally going back down for a landing. We descended to about, I think, 1,500 feet, and from there, we were starting to do a little circle around the airstrip. And as we did this, I figured out that my speed brake button just wasn't working, which is very important when you're landing, because you want to land about 140 to like 180 knots uh, of speed. And so you don't really want to uh, be going too fast, or you're going to tear up your gears and probably land too hard, or you don't want to be going too slow, or you'll stall. Again, these are mechanics that I already kind of knew, but I didn't know about the specifics of how this aircraft works. So it's it's always a new beast with any new aircraft and any new flight model of any game. Uh, 120 knots. Okay. Anywhere between like 160 and 120 is fine. Okay. And this is where trim would work, but yeah. Try to uh, go a little bit to the left of the runway for me, because okay. I'm landing right next to you. Gotcha. You're doing very fine. You're doing excellent right now. 
Whew. And I'm on your left right there. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude, you are so close. And I am impressed. Down, yeah, and Press yeah. W on the keyboard to yep. break. This thing has, like, no breaks. I am super impressed by how close you were that whole time. Whoa! Hello! Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he moved out of the way, so. Yep. Oops. Oh, oh, oh his yep. nose is in the grass. <laughs> and, his, and his wing. <laughs> First try, not so bad. I was really wiggling the controls and struggling to keep control of the aircraft because I really didn't know the muscle memory feels of it. But what's crazy this whole time is that I landed and Ralphie dude was flying right next to me. I, I, that was one of the most things I was uh, impressed about and I even told him that. I was like, dude, this is nuts how you're just flying in formation right beside my wiggly ass. Like, <laughs> he is right behind me this entire time, right as we're flying in the air, circling the, uh, the airstrip as well. He's literally like 20 feet off to my right. I was so impressed by that. Like, that's just, it shows you what a player with probably three plus thousand hours or four plus thousand hours in this game can do, especially with their refined setups and their refined uh, tracking equipment as well, plus their extreme amount of knowledge and muscle memory with flying the different flight models in this game. And then came the fun part. This game isn't just called Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's DCS, it's Digital Combat Simulator. You don't just fly the aircraft, that's not the fun part. I mean, I guess it's kind of the fun part, but uh, most of the fun is coming from killing things with the aircraft. With with the boom booms and the pew pews and the good splash. So the first lesson about combat was guns v guns. Ralphie dude set me up in a 1v1 versus a MIG in a just basic combat scenario. We both only were limited to our guns. We would pass each other and then we would turn and get into a little fur ball with each other. Now this is an extremely cool and I didn't even know about this amount of like strategy and tactics. He taught me about the patience that you need that you don't always need to be on target but you need to be prepared and saving energy and saving potential energy to eventually get on target. It was a very interesting lesson and I really do think that it's something that all people should know when they f like fight in this game dogfight style because it was a it was an extremely big eye-opener to me. I always just tried to pull on the stick as hard as I could. I probably was losing a lot of energy in any dogfight I was ever in and uh, what he told me is, is a huge example of just how important it is to save your energy as an aircraft in a dogfight, in a gun v gun dogfight. Saving energy is everything because both aircraft in a dogfight are usually just afterburners. They are pushing as much thrust as they can out and they're trying to spin and turn around onto each other as fast as they can. So it creates this huge just circle of two aircraft just trying to chase each other's tails around and trying to shoot the other one in the butt. But it's really difficult because there's a lot of different strategies. You're not just running around in a circle playing ring around the rosy. You are in a three-dimensional space. You can go up and down but going up gives you more potential energy, but you're also losing kinetic energy. And if you go down, you're getting more kinetic energy, but losing your potential energy. And if you are right above the ground, then you have zero potential energy, and that enemy fighter knows exactly where you have to go. You are gonna eventually have to go back up. So there's a whole mechanic here, and it's very cool. It's a lot of muscle memory. It's a lot of like small tips. It's nothing that you can just, I could just tell you on a single sentence basis, but it was a bunch of fun dogfighting. Excellent, then I'll roll, keep rolling, roll up, there you go, roll matches wings, Ooh. good shot, that's an excellent snap. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> After Thanksgiving passed, we met up again, and this time it wasn't just about guns, it was about missiles. So this time he, we got into a training server and he showed me how to use the different missiles in the game, how to use the medium range, radar guided, and the short range, you know, uh, heat seeking, thermal guided missiles. And I also thought this day was also very interesting as well because he taught me about the different parameters and different distances at which you can comfortably shoot a missile like an A120, a medium range missile, and also the distances at which you can shoot a heat seeker, a close range missile. He also taught me about different mechanics of the missiles and how missiles don't just go forever. They eventually will run out of fuel and it's very difficult to 
really figure out exactly if a missile is going to hit a target or not. But you can have some ideas by, you know, the distance that the missile is going to have to travel and if the aircraft you're shooting at is coming towards you or away from you because there is a limited distance, a limited like kind of range to every single weapon in the game. An AIM-120, for example, only goes about maybe 15 nautical miles. So that's the range at which you can say, okay, this is probably going to hit the target. Anywhere above that, though, you're kind of just a, you're kind of just crap shooting. You're not really going to hit much. And with heat seekers, it's something like less than four nautical miles or three or something very, very close. But those heat seekers also have a lot more agility. They can turn and weave and be flexible onto a target that's moving very quickly and erratically. AIM-120s are a lot longer and slenderer and they can't really turn as fast because of that. So they are made for those long distance shots, but they're not really going to be able to turn very quickly. So as an aircraft doing defensive maneuvers, you are 100% just trying to create problems for any missile that's after you. So just like an aircraft that's on your tail and trying to be able to get his gun sight onto you, you're going to try to create as many problems for that aircraft as possible by weaving in different directions and moving all over the place and not just staying in a straight line. The thing is, is that if you're moving in different directions and weaving all over the place, you're also losing your kinetic energy, which is very important. You're trying to move as fast and as quickly as you can to evade that missile. And if you're turning and doing evasive maneuvers, you're moving slower because you're you're losing your potential energy for that kinetic energy to push you in a different direction. So there's this huge balance. It, it's crazy how much of this is very much muscle memory sort of stuff. It's thousands of hours of experience that teach you about how much you should evade and how much you should stay calm in a situation where like a missile's coming after you or a pilot in a a uh, guns only situation is right behind your tail. And I will admit, I have definitely not learned anything when it comes to this yet. I mean, I'm still, I've got the basics down, but when it comes to the actual muscle memory of trying to evade someone in a dogfight or something like that, I'm still very, very basic on those sort of parameters. So after all this time of learning how to fly the aircraft, learning how to shoot other aircraft, and learning how to fire missiles at other aircraft, we finally came to kind of the last big uh, lesson and that was carrier landing just being able to land on the carrier successfully and this is a very difficult sort of landing because you're not just landing on an airstrip that is big and long and <laughs> and uh, and, and flat. Landing on an aircraft carrier is even more challenging and extremely more challenging. You have a much smaller target area where you have to land on. You have to be going the perfect speed. If you go too slow, you're going to crash into the side of the ship. If you go too fast, you're going to go off the end of the ship. And uh, it's very, very spooky. Uh, being able to do this correctly took a lot of uh, practice doing standard landings on a standard airstrip and then also took a lot of information from Ralphie dude and watching him being able to do the landing and then trying it myself uh, super super difficult every single time I'm doing this I'm sweating out of my armpits because I don't know why it just it gets your blood just pumping man now just Be a fire pilot. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, now be a fighter pilot. That's a good way to say it. You're good. Don't smack into the back of the sh Yep. Power. Power. Okay. Good. Good, good. And there you go. <laughs> Fourth wire? Yep. Oh, jeez. Right the hook. Yep. There you go. So, after this, Ralphie hops off for the night, and I'm sitting there. I don't know what to do. I want to fly some more. I don't know where to go. There's so many different servers to go on. And you know what I said? I said, you know what? I'm going I'm to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to go to a PvE server, and in a real situation, with multiple other players around me, trying to m make sure I don't friendly fire anybody, I'm going to try to try to help out. Try to help out. So I went into his server, Jeez. and I escorted a, uh, a bomber aircraft. I took off from the airstrip, and I flew maybe 50 miles or whatever until I found this bomber aircraft that was out in front of me. And I, uh, my, my goal was to help him out, to basically 
help him and protect him from other aircraft because he really had nothing in terms of air-to-air -air, uh, weapons to fight off other aircraft. He just had a huge amount of bombs. So I flew along with him for a little bit and I chatted to him in the chat box and I said, hey, I'm new just in case you didn't know and all I know how to use is air-to-air -air missiles, uh, but I'll protect you from aircraft as much as I can. He said, okay, just come along. And so I flew along with him, did some like little distant formation flight because I suck at formation flight right now. And then I saw it, an enemy aircraft in the distance and I had to go get it because if, if he launched a long range missile towards my buddy, that would be a very, very bad situation for my buddy, the bomber guy. So I waved off. I, I left my buddy to go do his bombing run because there were no other aircraft in the area that I spotted and I went after this F-18. And yeah, it's an F-18. So it's basically F-18 versus F-18, which is kind of odd. I hit my afterburners and I flew as fast as I could towards this guy. I knew that if he got anywhere close towards my bomber, and this is AI by the way, not a player, but I was still, I still felt good about this. I dove to the ground not knowing where he was, I lost him in my visual point of view, and so I only had just a radar signature that I had just seen him at before. He was at something like 5,000 feet, not very high above the ground, and I knew that he was just trying to get away from me as fast as he could towards my bomber. And then. I found him. He was doing a perpendicular dive to me, and I locked on with my close range missile. Boom. One of the most satisfying kills I have ever had in a video game, and it was against an AI, which is stupid, but it's just, for me, it was a huge stepping stone at the time for me to be able to just kill an F-18 in a game. It was cool to know that I probably had just protected the bomber and allowed him to do a bombing run and if I wasn't there in that server, he might have been contacted with a missile from that F-18, which was which was kind of fun. I, I liked I liked being able to pr uh, protect another player as he was doing his thing while I did my thing. DCS is really impressive when it all comes together in one of these sort of objective-based uh, missions on multiplayer where there's 25 or 40 players playing on a single server and they're all in different types of roles in their aircraft. Some are bombers, some are multi-role fighters, some are just air-to-air -air fighters, kind of kind of like me. I'm mostly an air-to-air -air fighter and an F-18. Some of them are faster, some of them are more stealthy, some of them are, you know, Russian and some of them are American. So you see all these different aircraft all around you um, and you're, you're communicating to them using realistic radio systems and such. And uh, I don't know, it comes together to create this really cool experience that I almost felt like I was playing like an Arma game for the first time again. You know, just having such a huge world out in front of me that I didn't really know about. And I was definitely impressed by it. Being able to use what I learned from Ralphie Dude's training and be able to go in a server by myself and help out, even a little bit, even maybe against an easy difficulty AI, still being able to help out and uh, protect my buddies from the enemies out there in the uh, artificial intelligence world. Anyways, guys, that's it for the video today. That was, uh, that was my experience in learning DCS. Probably in the future, uh, you'll get some action-packed DCS combat footage in here or something, because I know a lot of you have wanted that for a very, very long time. But yeah, I've basically learned all of the, the basics and inter some of the intermediate stuff about the F-18 Hornet, and so this will be the first aircraft you see. Uh, we also have an A-10 as well, and so I want to learn that aircraft after I learn this one and get very confident with this one. Uh, and so I'll be able to do some A-10 gun runs and sort of stuff like that, but in a much more realistic uh, scenario than Arma 3 gun runs. So I hope you learned something in this video. Maybe not just about if you're a professional in DCS and know everything about this aircraft. Maybe you didn't learn anything about the aircraft, but maybe you learned something about, you know, how effective a teacher can be in a game and how effective, you know, having someone teach you how to play a game can be rather than just watching tutorials or getting a quick tip from a streamer. This is definitely the way to do it. Get a teacher, get someone to help you out. That's the best way to do it, in my opinion. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for spending your time with me today. And if you happen to plagiarize one of my videos from time to time, at least put my name at the end and not your Patreon link. That is all.